How jolly. <laughs> Tiny green balls. Mmm. Yes. Good tasting. Quite sweet. What are they called? Peas. It is a truth universally acknowledged that an 18th century fan in possession of a YouTube channel is in want of a Jane Austen review. But put away your pride and prejudices, set aside your sense and sensibilities, and emancipate yourself from your Emmas, because today we are doing Lady Susan. Yeah, not one of the more famous ones. Indeed, it's a short novel which she didn't even publish, and it's named the film version of it, is named after something she wrote even earlier than that. And that film, Love and Friendship. A title that beats its own drum. And is rather ironic, considering what's going to happen in the rest of this story. Now, it might seem a bit strange that the book's called Lady Susan, but it's called Love and Friendship, and yet there's another piece of juvenilia called Love and Friendship. It's quite simple, really. Lady Susan is only called that because that's the main character. The book doesn't have a proper name because it was never published. And so Love and Friendship was put on it because it fits more and it has that ironic... There's not a lot of love in this. There's not a lot of friendship. There are a lot of laughs. If only it hadn't been for Langford. How happy we might have been. They were the Mannerings, they live at Langley, and they've just had a visit from Lady Susan. The most accomplished flirt in all England. Problems have ensued. So she's gone off to Churchill to live with her brother-in-law and his wife, who for some reason doesn't seem to like her. It's true, I've always detested her, and that before her marriage I went to great lengths to prevent it. Yet it shows an illiberal spirit to resent for long a plan which didn't succeed. But I've noticed that where there's a disposition to dislike, a pretext will soon be found. Or it could be that they cheated her out of some estate earlier. Or it could be that she leaves broken houses wherever she goes. She has no idea. My project will be the children. I know a couple of their names already, and I've decided to attach myself to young Frederick in particular. Taking him on my lap and sighing over him for his dear uncle's sake. Which is what she does. How much Frederick reminds me of his dear uncle. Do you think there's a resemblance? Oh, remarkable. The eyes. Weren't Frederick Vernon's eyes brown? Well, I refer more to the shape and slope of the brow. Oh. One of the problems I've had reading Jane Austen is trying to separate all the characters, all their names and their relations and such like. How helpful is this film that it does this? <laughs> Adding to this household is Lady Susan's brother-in-law's wife's brother. He comes to check Lady Susan out. He wants to meet the most accomplished flirt in all of England. I understand Lady Susan possesses a degree of captivating deceit, which might be pleasing to detect. He's surprised. She's a lot more demure than he was imagining. Of course, it's a game. She wants to win. There's a certain pleasure in making a person predetermined to dislike instead acknowledge one's superiority. Lady Susan's true love, if such can be said, is Mr Mannering from Langley Estate, which she's just fled from. But for now, she'll do with flirting with the Mr De Courcy, something which the elder De Courcy finds a little bit worrying. A permanent connection between you and Lady Susan Vernon would destroy every comfort of our lives. There's also the problem of Lady Vernon's daughter, Frederica. Frederica is 16, Lady Vernon is 35. She makes Lady Vernon look old, so Lady Vernon sent her to a school. The fees at Frederica's school are far too high to even think of paying. So, in a sense, it's an economy. Not paying those fees doesn't work. Frederica gets kicked out and ends up at Churchill anyway. 
But Lady Susan has a plan. She's going to marry Frederica to a young, rich idiot called James. He invites himself to Churchill. Churchill. That's how you say it. All together like that. Churchill. <laughs> oh, well, that explains a lot. You see, I'd heard church and hill, but couldn't find either. All I could see was this big house. <laughs> Fine name. Churchill. Frederica doesn't really want to marry an idiot. But as Lady Susan says... Dear, our present comfortable state is of the most precarious sort. We don't live. We visit. And they have to hurry because... A man so rich and foolish will not remain single long. You can tell he's an idiot. He has this to say about adultery. To consider the difference between the sexes. Uh, for a husband to wander is not the same as vice versa. If a husband strays, he's merely responding to his biology. That is how men are made. But for a woman to act in a similar way is ridiculous. <laughs> Unimaginable. Just the idea is funny. <laughs> now, there are a lot of machinations which take 40 odd pages in the book and which take about an hour in the film. Because now Lady Susan has to balance two kind of lovers and work out what her daughter's going to marry and her daughter doesn't want to and the parents don't want her involved and there's a lot of things going on and you got to see the film to work it out. What I can say though is that this is an early Jane Austen work and the earlier Jane Austen works are for me funnier. I prefer them. They're less polished, less sillier, the contrivances are more contrived. But they're just so full of quotable lines. Like this. I like this man. Pray heaven no harm come of it. And this. Once a man gets his name on a banking house, he rolls in money. And this. Not that I would ever want to think in opportunistic terms. Oh, certainly not. And this. May Mr. Johnson's next gouty attack end more favourably. It's great. These are all from the book. I will confirm the citation if you're interested. Now, things don't all go to plan, but I'm not going to go into that. My daughter has shown herself to be cunning and manipulative. I couldn't be more pleased. So you've got a book full of zingers, it's not very long, and it's tightly plotted. The film basically writes itself. Should you read the book? Yeah. Should you see the film? Oh, um, yes. There's one fantastic scene I have to bring up, though. This is an epistolary novel. It's written in letters. They were very popular in the 18th century. Indeed, one of the longest novels ever written. Clarissa, which as you can see, I've never quite managed to get through, is all written in letters. In fact, it's insane because she writes about seven letters a day. But there's a beautiful takedown of the epistolary novel in this film. My dear, could you just read? Verbatim. Yes, the words, some of Catherine's voice will be in them. Oh, I'll read every word, comma and dash, if that's what you wish. Here, I grow deeply uneasy, comma, my dearest mother, comma, about Reginald, comma, from witnessing the very rapid increase in her influence, semicolon. Just the words, please. No punctuation at all, all right? That's much easier. What more can I add? Both book and film are very, very entertaining and don't take very long. I recommend them. Dance.